Well, hey gang, Crash here from the CrashCast podcast. I am pleased to share with you our project in the workshop this week. We are going to build something that looks a little bit like this. This is the mini bipe. This is a first generation, however. This is the mini bipe from Slow Bipe Air. Now, they've been kind of out of the pocket for the last, uh, oh, six or seven months, but they're revamping their line. They're coming back with kits now of their, their popular aircraft. Uh, before you could get it as an ARF or an almost ready to fly model. Well, now you can save a little money, build it yourself, buy the kit, and you'll end up with something that looks pretty close to this. These are unique aircraft in the fact that they're very inexpensive, they're very lightweight. We have an under cambered airfoil, you can see here, and surprisingly, we've got a dihedral on the bottom wing and a straight wing on the top. So it's, a, it's an interesting little aircraft. Best of all, these things come in really light. They use inexpensive electronics and they won't break the bank if you're looking for an airplane uh, to, to play around with. These are great for the new modelers. If you're looking at getting into the RC hobby, you don't have a lot of money to spend, uh, maybe today's youth. Uh, you can you don't have to mow thousands of yards to get your first radio controlled aircraft experience. You can get it for pretty cheap with these. I don't know what the cost is going to be yet, but I'm assured that it's going to be very inexpensive to, uh, to facilitate your putting together a, a nice uh, first radio controlled airplane experience. Now, if you're an experienced modeler and looking to get into electric, or maybe you already fly electric, I urge you to get one of these. An aircraft like this is a lot of fun to fly. It's easy. This is your great lazy Sunday afternoon flyer. Pull up a lawn chair, have a seat, throw it in the air, and just tool around the sky. They are a lot of fun. Best of all, they're very, uh, they, they last. They're not indestructible by any means, but they do last. The whole design is such that, you know, if you hit the ground hard, the wing can pop off with the rubber bands. The bottom wings are actually there's a magnet that holds them together in the slot in the fuselage. Uh, this one is getting a little long in the tooth. Uh, it's been smacked around pretty good. It's been with me to Ceph a couple of times, been to Hafey. Anyway, a lot of fun. And our project now is going to be building the kit version of this fine aircraft. For more information, you can head on over to slowbipe.com. And as well, we're going to be talking about this uh, project on our podcast. So if you have any questions throughout this entire project, please feel free to email me at crash.hancock at gmail.com. Also listen to our podcast because we talk about these things quite a bit on that show. You can find that at www.thecrashcast.com and search us in iTunes as well. Just The Crash Cast, all one word, and search podcasts in iTunes and you'll find us. Well, there we have it. There's our introduction. Very small airplane, about an 18-inch wingspan, weighs about 7 ounces, and it's a hoot to fly. Perfect if you're on a budget or just looking for a simple, fun, relaxing, what we call Sunday afternoon flyers. So, join us for the rest of the build. We'll get started uh, momentarily. Okay, again, this is what we're going to build, or something very similar to this. And we're going to talk about what you need to have to get started. First of all, you're going to need the kit. And I apologize if my lighting is poor in the workshop here. Uh, it always is. And I've got, my gosh, about 600 watts of light bulbs going here. But this is how your mini bipe from Slow Bipe Air is going to arrive. Try to get that in the camera good. It's packaged up nice and neat. And... Basically, that's all we have. So we'll get into this. Let's see, to get a better contrast. Is that better? That's a little better. So, got some nice bubble wrap. And a nice big envelope that this is in. All the parts come packaged very well. I have yet to receive anything damaged from slow bipe. So here's our miscellaneous hardware package. And I'll set that aside. Hopefully you can see it. Here's our elevator and horizontal stab. Ooh, let's put that there. Um, 
Here's our side struts for our holding our, our wings together. We've got a couple of push rods here. This is our vertical and our rudder. Already hinged for you, just like the elevator. We've got our two bottom wings that uh, go together nicely. And we've got our top wing and then our fuselage and then also this piece here that we're going to be gluing down. Now, speaking of glue, let's talk briefly about what you're going to need to complete this airplane kit. We're going to use two adhesives throughout this build. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I know that you don't, you, you, you may have a preferred gluing method and by all means use what you're comfortable with, but I'm going to build it as per the instructions. So for the glue, I've got just some inexpensive, pick it up your, at your local home improvement store, just some epoxy. Five minute epoxy is all that you need. As well, we're going to use Tight Bond 3. This is a great adhesive. This is probably the best wood glue or aliphatic resin you're going to ever get your hands on. Surprisingly though, we are not going to use uh, cyanoacrylate glue or CA because most CA glues, like a super glue if you will, most of them will heat up during the cure process, even the foam safe CAs, and you'll end up melting your foam. And we don't want that. We want this thing to be, you know, put together nice and light. We want your success the first time. Another adhesive that you might want to try, I have had incredible luck with the foam tack adhesive from Beacon Adhesives. I actually won a mess of this stuff at Hafey last year and I'd never used it, never even thought of using it. And then out of desperation, I pulled out a bottle of it and oh my gosh, I love this glue. Nonetheless though, we're gonna build per the instructions. Um, another option is Gorilla Glue. Uh, but I would recommend this is not for a beginner because this glue likes to foam up and oh my gosh, it can create a mess if you're not prepared paired with it or you don't have um, any experience with it. Also, you may want to paint this one. I intend to paint it. Paints are can be terribly uh, difficult on foam airframes. Uh, these are, uh, this, this foam is an XPS foam or an extruded polystyrene and it doesn't take paint well. However, the little bottles of Krylon Shortcuts works great on this. So we're going to use this. I picked out yellow and black. I'm going to make a, you know, that, that's a good contrast colors for me, or a good, good pair of contrast colors. So I'm going to use that, and we'll talk about that as we get to that in the build. Now you're going to need some electronics. And i got to tell you, I have been doing business with Jeff over at Heads Up RC forever. I love Heads Up RC, and that's where I always get my electronics. Uh, they just they treat you fair, cheap shipping, great prices, and I have never been let down. And I've probably ordered a couple of thousand dollars from Heads Up. So that's where I got my electronics for this one. We've got a couple of 5-gram servos, just a couple of inexpensive 5-gram servos. You need two. We've got the motor. Now this motor is the Power Up 250 Slow Fly Motor. And this is probably going to show up crummy on camera. Everything does in my workshop. But nice, lightweight motor. Now, pretty much any, oh, 22, 24, 26 gram motor is going to work. But this is the optimal motor for this setup. So that's the Power Up 250 Slow Fly version. We're going to need a speed controller as well. Again, heads up RC. I'm using their 10 amp speed controller. And the cool thing is, is if you buy the motor and speed controller, these particular ones from Heads Up, they've already got the bullets soldered onto them. So you'll be able to connect your motor to your speed controller right off without having to break out the soldering iron. Um, also, a good thing about this, is that this motor has a built-in prop saver adapter. So you don't have to buy one of those because it comes with the motor. Um, I've got some 735 props. Now you can use an 8.4, but 735 is a great prop. And on this project, oh, I got some extra O-rings. Man, <laughs> O-rings. These are what you use to secure your prop to your prop adapter, uh, your prop saver prop adapter. So you probably want to get a few extra of those. Uh, because if you smack the ground, the prop's going to come off. Most likely it won't break, but you'll break the O-ring. 
And then finally, we need a battery. And I am using, with the 7.3 prop, I am using from Heads Up RC, a nice little 3S500 battery. Real light. I haven't weighed it yet, but it's very light. It's a good battery. Um, best of all, let me find it here, I believe. Yes, we use a JST connector. It's already on the battery. As well, there's a JST connector already on the speed controller. So that saves us a lot of work. I always hate breaking out the soldering iron. I just want to build and go fly. Now for tools, you're going to need a few tools, just uh, a few small things. You're going to need um, you know, a, a small Phillips head and a small standard. So just raid your toolbox for that. And honestly, I think that's really about all we're going to need. Um, for now, I think that's, that's what we're, we're going to need, yeah. <laughs> and, and I'm doing this off the cuff, so forgive me if I stumble and stammer. Um, this is kind of how I build. <laughs> so um, anyway, this is the materials that you're going to need. And uh, with that, um, we'll get started with the build. Okay, we're going to get started on this project right now. Now the first things I want you to do is grab your fuselage and grab your side fuselage piece that goes in like so. You'll have three carbon fiber rods that will go in these slots here and one back here. And then finally we've got a push, little small push rod guide piece that we're going to glue into this slot here in the back. Okay, so grab those pieces, get you a piece of sandpaper. I'm just using some 150 grit. And at this point, you know, take your, your carbon tubes, carbon rods actually, and just rough them up a little bit. Now you don't have to sand them, you know, real aggressively, but just rough them up because we want them to take the glue real well. Um, be careful that you don't inhale the dust that comes off this carbon fiber. Bad, bad stuff for you. Uh, you get that in your lungs and you can get lung cancer on short order. <laughs> so we don't want anybody getting sick. Um, I'm just going to rough them up pretty good. I see a place that I missed on this one. There we go. Okay, that's out of the way now. Get your Tight Bond 3 wood glue. And first we're going to start off, we're just going to put a nice bead all the way around this recess area for our side. Uh, it's, I can't really call it a hatch. But I'm just going to run a little bead all the way through there. And it's okay if you get a little sloppy, which I tend to do all the time, because it'll wipe off. That's a pretty good little bead there. Now what we're going to do is just make sure we're on the camera good. We're just going to press this into place. Make sure that it is firmly seated. I'm going to take a paper towel and just wipe off any excess that we have there. And I was also careful, we've got two channels in the back here where our servos go, and I was careful to not get glue in those channels so that, you know, we're going to eventually want to route push rods through there, or I'm sorry, uh, servo wires through there. So that's your first step is to glue this hatch firmly in place. Wipe off whatever excess glue you have. It's one of the good things about working with wood glue is the cleanup is pretty easy while it's still wet. Okay, we've got that piece in. Now let's go ahead and put a little bit, I'm going to put a little bit on our push rod guide block and you don't have to put a lot you just want it to to make a good you know a good uh, glue surface and we're going to push this firmly into place like so and then I'm going to use my paper towel and wipe off any of the excess e excess that's left Just like so. And then finally, we want to put a good liberal bead in our carbon rod slots here. 
again, don't worry about, you know, you can use too much because if you get too much on there, you can just wipe it away. After you seat the, the tube or the, the rod in place. I just don't, I'm putting in just enough that I can't see any blue in the bottom. And I know that I'm using too much and that's perfectly fine. Now I'm going to take these longer ones and slide them in. Oh yes, I did use too, way too much. <laughs> but you'll just wipe off all that excess. And this glue will allow you to paint over it, so I'm not too worried about it. Let's put another one in. Now, one of the things that you want to do is you want to make sure that that rod is seated fully into the bottom. Well, I did use way too much glue on there. <laughs> I'm going to wipe out all the excess. And then we'll do the back one. Okay, mental note. Maybe don't use quite as much glue as I did. <laughs> Excess. And I'm not too worried about this. Just try to get the excess off because, again, I intend to paint this one. And, again, make sure that everything is seated in all the way to the bottom. And I'm just using a flat blade screwdriver just to seat it all the way in. And of course, since I use so much glue, I've got more glue coming out. Oops. This is going to provide the necessary strength should you have a hard landing. All right, and with that, I will let that set up for a few minutes. Wood glue dries fast, but we're going to let it set up for a few minutes, and then we'll go on to the next step. For our next step, I want you to pull out five pieces of plywood here. We have these two, um, and I've already put the three for the nose on here. And the reason I did that is I wanted to trial fit it. I would urge you to do the same. Trial fit it so that you know exactly how it goes on. The, um, the motor mount slides right in there uh, in the grooves of the foam. It's relieved. You can just slide that in place and center it up. And then you'll take your two side pieces and they'll snap over. Hopefully that shows. They will slide over the motor mount and make a nice flush fit on both sides. Now it is possible, the reason I want you to trial fit this is it is possible to try to put that thing in on the wrong way. And I'm going to show you. You can see, hopefully, I've got it lined up there and if I try to go that way with it, well we've got foam showing here and we've got this piece here sticking way up. So there's one side of these. They are the same you can use them on either one, just be sure that you set them up correctly, just like that. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it off and lay it flat so that I know exactly how it goes. Now, for these, all of these wood pieces, we're going to use our epoxy. Okay? Now, when you use the epoxy, I, I like to mix on a paper plate. They're cheap and easy to do, uh, easy to throw away when you're done. And get a stick. In the case, my epoxy, my five-minute epoxy came with a little, in between the plungers, it came with a little uh, mixing stick. So, you know, use that. You can use a screwdriver. You can use a piece of music wire. Just whatever you have laying around in the shop. Now, we are using five-minute epoxy, so this is going to, whoa, this is going to go pretty fast. But I would say use extra. Mix up extra on this step. 
because you don't want to run out of epoxy while you're well, how does that go there we go you don't want to run out of epoxy halfway through your gluing step and this stuff is going to work uh, you're going to have about five minutes to work with it we're going to mix it up real good and it'll start to set up quickly and I when I mix this stuff up I mix it real well just do it a nice circular motion make sure it's thoroughly mixed because if it's not thoroughly mixed it won't set and anywhere these wood pieces are going to touch foam you want a thin layer of this epoxy down and take your time with it because <laughs> you don't want to, I mean, you, you can't take too much time. It's a five minute epoxy. But the last thing you want is to end up, you know, running out of glue or having it stiffen up on you or not using enough glue. All I'm going to do is just smear some on there. I've got a paper towel on the ready. And basically, we're going to slide that in, and then we'll go to the next part. This won't take long at all, but anywhere this wood is going to touch the foam, we're going to put some epoxy down. I hope this is showing up on camera because I can't shoot this part again. <laughs> okay, we're going to push that into place. Flip it over, make sure I know exactly how that goes, just like that. Hopefully uh, that shows up for you on camera. Just putting a good liberal amount. And we'll push this into place. And if you have some clamps, you can see if my clamps are big enough. You can usually put those on there. I buy these clamps at Harbor Freight. They're super cheap, which is what I'm all about. <laughs> now, quickly, I'm going to wipe up a little excess glue that I've spilt on here that I've that's mushed out. Okay, and now we've got that set up. You want to be careful that that motor mount is flush to the surface. The last thing you want to end up doing is getting left thrust in it. If you have to err, err on the side of right thrust. In other words, have it tilted instead of it being flush, have it tilted over just a little bit to where your motor would face slightly to the right. And the reason we do that, uh, this airplane doesn't need thrust built into it. That's a trick that we do a lot with our airplanes, especially nitro, things that have a lot of thrust. And I just put it on both sides of this wing mount. And I'm going to slide that right in, flush to the sides, and wipe away the excess. The reason... Uh, we sometimes put, ooh, that stuff's setting up fast. We sometimes put thrust is to counter um, the torque of the motor. And in this case, now, yeah, I'm going to have to mix up a little more. Even though I had plenty of glue, this stuff set really fast on me. And it's already tacked up enough that I'm going to have to mix another batch to do this last one. But anyway, that's what you're going to end up doing. We'll have one of these mounts also back here and we've got our got our motor mount all set up and clamped in place. So off camera I will go ahead and mix up another little batch of epoxy to cover this plate and put it in place and then we will be we'll be ready to move on to the next step. And that's what I get for talking so much while I'm building. <laughs> I let my glue set up. So, when I join you back again, we'll be ready for the next step.
Okay, at this point in our construction of our mini pipe, uh, we've got everything glued to the fuselage, everything is set up, and the next step would be to put on our rudder and vertical stab, as well as our horizontal, and then we would want to put in our uh, um, control horns. There we go. Now, I am going to paint mine, so at this point, you know, you may elect to not paint yours, and that's perfectly fine, but I like to paint mine, and I want it to be nice and neat, and I don't want to paint over the control horns, because they are the plastic never really takes it that good, takes the paint and all. So I'm going to leave those just as they are. Um, so at this point, I'm ready to paint, and if you're ready to paint, get your Krylon shortcuts and paint your fuselage. And when we return, we'll start putting on our elevator and our rudder. Well, at this point, you can see that uh, I've got some painting done here. I've got uh, these surfaces are painted yellow for my horizontal and my vertical. Now we're going to, we've got a couple more steps for epoxy, and then we're pretty much done building our airframe. So what we're going to do, let's start with the vertical and rudder. I have this laid on my table here. We've got a tape side, and we have a V side, or that's our hinge point, right? Well, we're going to set it tape side up, okay? And then we're going to mix up a small amount of epoxy, and we're going to put a dab of epoxy there, and then we're going to push this through like so, and then we'll put a dab of epoxy on the back side, and then we will put our plate on and mash it in, set it, and then that will be done. Just please note, this is the vertical, this is the rudder. So we want, I can get that to show, we want it so that our control horn is the, the holes where it's going to attach the push rod, we want it to be kind of close there to the hinge line. Okay? And I'm going to do that off camera to facilitate speed. Now the other thing here, we've got our horizontal and our elevator. We need to put control horns on these also. But, I want you to notice, we've got tape side up. Okay, and then there are two pre-drilled holes where we're going to put our control horn in. But, on the elevator, we're not going to put the control horn on the tape side. We're going to flip that over, and we're going to put that on the hinge side, or the cutout side. So, again, a little bit of epoxy. Push it through, put a little epoxy on the top, on the tape side, and then we'll put our backing plate on there, as such. So I'll hold that up. You can see we've got our groove for our hinge, and we've got our control horn on there, and the holes on the control horn are over the hinge line cutout. Okay, so I'm going to glue that up off camera. You don't need to see me mixing too much epoxy again. And, uh, and then we've got one more thing to epoxy after that, and we'll practically be done with the airframe. Okay, our last step here with the epoxy, at least I think it is, is to glue on our vertical stabilizer rudder assembly. You'll notice that it's going to be really hard to see after me painting this black, but there is a recess on the tail of the aircraft on the right hand side. And that recess butts up with the slot, and so if I can turn it just, yeah, with the slot for the horizontal. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix up some more epoxy and we're going to glue this vertical stabilizer in nice and flat and flush with our slot. And it's very important that we leave that slot open because that's where our horizontal stabilizer is going to plug in. Now, after this is glued, you can, if you want, you can glue the horizontal stabilizer in. Personally, I don't do that. And the reason is because it's such a nice, tight friction fit in here that you really don't need to, you got to kind of pull at it just a little bit, but you, you really don't need to glue that in. 
you can just leave it as a friction fit. And the cool thing is, is the way the wings are on this, you know, you can pop the wings off this airframe very easily. And then as well, you can pop off the horizontal stabilizer and you have an aircraft that you can put in a box and pack, you know, somewhat flat. So I'm going to leave that up to you. I don't ever glue on my horizontal, but I am going to go ahead and epoxy on my vertical stabilizer now at this point. And the next time I come back from camera, you're going to see a completed and fully assembled airframe. Okay, I certainly didn't have to go through this step of pre-assembly, but if you're like me and you've been building models, or even if this is your first build, if you're like me, you just can't resist the urge to put it together and, and see how it's going to look. And I think it's turned out pretty nifty. So there we have it. You'll see, as we look at the right side, you can see that uh, the rudder, I have a control horn here on the right side, and also on the right side, the control horn is on the bottom for our elevator. Now, if you had trouble uh, putting your wing on, I mean, you shouldn't have, but if you did, just remember if we look at the, if we look at the little um, slots that are in the wing that allow it to bend to form its uh, under cambered airfoil, you'll see that there's a short distance with the first slot and then they get bigger as it goes. And of course the short side, that's what goes on first. That's what goes in toward the front. And the same thing on the top wing. And all that I did was set the top wing on, stretch a rubber band across, and then that held it into place. Then I put the rest of the rubber bands on. I did the bottom wings just by sliding them into each half. And then the magnet, you can hear the magnet pop as soon as it grabs. And then I very carefully took these end struts and fished them on. And I, all I usually do is I put the strut on and then I go, oh, I don't know, maybe an eighth inch to three sixteenths past, uh, allowing the wing to just poke out a little bit. You don't want to go too far. In fact, you can even have these flush with the wings if you'd like, because that allows it, uh, if you have a hard landing, it helps it to pop off so that you don't damage anything. It absorbs the impact. So anyway, that's where we are right now. We have a completed airframe. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wings off of it. I'll leave the tail alone. Again, I put the, I glued the vertical on, but I just did the friction fit on the horizontal, and that is plenty sufficient. So I'm going to take the wings off, and we'll get started installing our electronics. Okay, the first of our electronics that we're going to put in is we're going to put in our 5 gram servos. And the cool thing about these, the way you mount your servos in this, is you can just snake your wire through the slots. And I'll try to do this and make sure I'm on camera at the same time. Snake it through the slot. I come back on this side and pull it through. There we go. And I realized when I painted this black, I painted it for myself. I thought, ooh, I'm going to like those colors. And the problem there, unfortunately, is that it doesn't show up on camera. Anyway, we snake the wire through, and then you set the servo in place, and you just push it in. There's no glue, no screws. It's a friction fit. On a seven or eight ounce airplane, that is perfectly fine. So you can see we've got those in. And I have already hooked these up to my receiver and centered them. You can also use a servo tester. If you don't have one of these and you build a lot of airplanes, this is certainly something that you're going to want to get. It's a servo tester. I got this from my friends over at Luke's RC. I believe Heads Up RC also has it. But I run a BEC in one side and hook it up to my battery. And then it allows me to center the servo and test it, make sure it works. Sometimes with these inexpensive servos, you get a bad one. Anyway, that's what I did. And I've already centered up my servos. 
so I know that they are perfectly straight and now I can put the arms on it. Now unfortunately at the beginning of the video when I was showing you all the cool stuff that you needed to get to put this project together I failed to tell you that you're going to need to get some Dubro quick links and that's something that you're going to need because you're going to hook your push rod up to these arms and you have to have a way to hook that push rod up. So I'm going to get some quick links and put on there. I keep a 20 or 30 of them in my, in my uh, toolbox all the time for all the airplanes that I built. But I'm going to put some quick links on there. I'm going to come in from the not the end hole but the second to the last hole. I'm going to pop a hole through there with a 1 16th drill bit. Uh, you can also open it up with an X-Acto blade. I've done that a bazillion times. But basically I'm going to put a quick link on each of these arms uh, about the second hole in. And I'll do that off camera and then I'll screw the arms into the servos and then that part will be complete. Okay, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. This is these are tiny pieces, but these are the Dubro quick links I was telling you about. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can show you what we do here. But it's got a, this is going to go onto the servo arm. It'll go through the arm, and then there's this little piece of plastic that will that'll go on that end and you can use a pair of pliers to just push it through and I'm gonna do one real quick so I'm coming in carefully with a 1 16th bend coming into that second hole and I open that up now on the top side you can see paint on my fingers <laughs> we'll push that through just like that and that's what, what it looks like. Now I can take this piece, and this is the tricky part. But if I push it just a little bit to get it started, then I can come over here with my pliers and ever so carefully I can push that down until I can feel it cat, catch. Anyway, now we have the ability to thread through our push rod through, I need my reading glasses, through that connect and then we take this little bitty screw when we're satisfied that everything's set up right and we screw that on. I can't do that without my reading glasses. But anyway, that's how we put on uh, quick links. So now that you understand that a little better, hopefully, I'm going to go ahead and put those on and I'll show you how it goes or how it looks when it's all finished. Okay, we have our two push rods here. We have our servos mounted. We have our, our servo arms on there. We have our quick links. Their servos are centered. Now we're ready to put our control rods on. And what I'm going to do so we're going to start with the top one. These rods are both the same length, so I'm going to find my hole here. Remember, and you can't see it of course, but remember we put in a push rod guide block in place here. And I'm just basically feeding that rod through that guide block. If I, there we go, we got a reflection. So I've just fed it through the top hole, and then I'm going to come over here and feed it through our top servo quick link. This is where having a big belly helps because I can use it to as another arm. Anyway, so now we've got that in there, but we don't have the set screw on it. That's okay. On the tail here, we're going to take this, you'll notice that we're pulling this rod at a little bit of an angle. And basically that is going to provide leverage to keep our push rod into our control horn for our vertical. And if I hold it this way you may be able to see there's some downward force in there. And then all the way up here we're, we're on uh, through our, our top servo quick link. 
So we'll do the same thing for the bottom one, except we're going to pull it at a little bit different angle because there's by doing it this way we don't have to worry about a Z bend, we just have a 90 degree bend in there. So I'm feeding it through, we're going to angle it to where it should push. We're going to push it, uh, let's see here, from the inside out. Let me get it lined up, then you'll be able to see it. Do I like that? Yep, let's go to the outside and see if that gives us more leverage to hold it in place. I think I like that better. Trying to get that set into the quick link. There we go. And now that should hold. So I've got this one the bottom servo, we got our push rod on it, going through the guide block, and then coming around, and just the spring tension is going to hold that L bend there in our push rod. It's going to hold it uh, in place so we don't have to put any other kind of connector or anything on there. Anyway, at this point, I will take my tiny little screws and set them before I lose them. Set those in our quick links and why they choose to put a flat uh, flat screw in there I'll, I'll never know. That's I've always thought that should always be a Phillips. Anyway we'll see if we can thread this through. And at this point, all I'm going to do is just snug it up. I'm not going to crank down on it because I know we're going to want to adjust that. Because right now I've got a little bit of down elevator going on. Don't need that. And i got a little bit of rudder going in it. So anyway, we'll adjust those later when we get ready to pick up the receiver and set, that, uh, set our control surfaces at a, at a neutral installation. Okay, next up. Grab your motor, and our motor should have your motor should have come with a package of screws, because mine did. And you really only have to put two on here, but I'm going to go ahead and put all four in. Two provide you a way in case uh, the motor hits and breaks away. It'll allow it to break away. But we're basically at this point we're going to put our motor in place and put our motor mount screws into the block. You don't want to tighten these down too much uh, because you can strip out the threads. But we're going to put the motor in in such a way, this is the front, where we can see it. I've got the motor wires coming out this right side and they're going to eventually go through the slot in our fuselage, just like that. So I'm going to secure the motor with four screws and then we'll come back to the next step. All right, we're down to the moment of truth here. I've got uh, I've got my two servos hooked up for rudder and elevator to my receiver. I've this receiver has already been bound to my transmitter, so just refer to your radio manufacturer's uh, instructions for how to do that. I have hooked up the speed controller. The wires, remember, were passed through this side through the little slot. And I've got the receiver uh, hooked with the speed controller. So now basically I'm ready to power it up and find out if everything is turning right and if all my directions are correct. Uh, servo travels and all that. So we always turn our transmitter on first. We've got a low throttle. I'm going to plug the battery in. That's looking good. A little buzzing. Chinese servos. Okay, we got. This should be, get it up in the shot here. This is left rudder, oh, and right rudder. There we go, left rudder and right rudder. Up elevator, down elevator, and let's try the throttle. I'm going to hold the plane back a little bit. 
I almost always miss this up. Uh... Oh wow, that little motor's got some power. And as luck would have it, that's something that never happens to me. Um, when I hooked up the speed controller to the motor, well, lo and behold, the motor is spinning the correct direction. If it were not, remember, these are uh, uh, um, uh, three-phase motors. So if you plug it all up and you try it out and you find out, ooh, the motor's spinning the wrong direction, well, then just swap any two motor, any two leads on, from your speed controller to your motor. Any two of those, you can just swap them and you're in business. Now, since this is uh, ready to go, you basically want to tuck away your receiver and your speed controller. I've already put a little patch of Velcro here toward the back where I'm going to put my receiver. And I'm going to pass through the antenna there to hopefully let it come out the other side and not bend. And voila, that's in place. Pretty good. Now what I'm going to do with the Velcro that you have supplied in your kit, and you may want to buy some more if you don't have enough here, but I'm going to use the Velcro to secure my speed controller toward the top of this open area, probably about right there, because I want to leave all of this other area near the nose, I want to leave that all open for when I put my battery in, because until I get everything all together, I don't know exactly where that battery is going to have to go to get CG. So I'm going to secure my speed controller in place and tuck away some of these wires a little bit. And then I'm going to put it all back together and we're going to find the center of gravity on this model. Okay, quickly before I put this all together and we establish the center of gravity, I do want to show you a close-up of how I have everything installed. Running across the top portion of this cutaway in the fuselage, that's my wires for my speed controller. There's the speed controller secured in place with a little bit of Velcro. There's my receiver, and you can position it anywhere you want in here. This just happens to fit mine because through that little slot, catch the reflection, I've got my antenna coming out. So anyway, that's how I've got it and I've got all this area open to position the battery. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and put it all together. Alright, with it all back together now we're ready to establish our center of gravity. I've played with this a little bit off camera to get it exactly where I like it. Uh, but the way that you're going to balance this aircraft, and this is a very neat way of doing it, you may notice, and it'll be hard again to see with this black, if I had it to do over again, I probably, as good as this black looks, I probably would not <laughs> do it for building on camera. But there is a hole going all the way through the fuselage right here. Now, what I'm doing... I've got a bamboo skewer. You can just as easily feed a piece of uh, string through there, but I'm putting a bamboo skewer through there, just like that. And if you, let's see, if you hold it, and this is going to be hard to see, but you should be able to suspend the airplane by something through that hole, and then ideally you want it to hang level. Now right now I'm a little nose heavy. When I say level, you know, you, maybe it would be better if you do use a piece of string. Let's see if I can back out a little bit more on the camera. That'll help. But when the aircraft is suspended, you know that you have the center of gravity right when you can look across the horizontal stabilizer and see that it's level. If it's too far this way, then you're nose heavy. And you need to actually pull the battery back in the slot a little bit. If it's this way and it's leaning too low, it means it's tail heavy and you don't want to fly an airplane tail heavy. It gets, uh, gets kind of funny. So ideally you want to be as close to level as you can. And for me, eyeballing this right now, mine is just a touch on the nose heavy side. And if you're going to err, err on the side of being nose heavy 
versus tail heavy. So again, you can perhaps see in there and see where I've got everything positioned. And we're good. We're ready to go fly. Now, for your control throws, I'm going to leave that up to you. But what I would recommend is that for your first flight, if you're a, if you're a newbie, <laughs> this is a first airplane, I would recommend that maybe you go with, oh, maybe about that much on the elevator. And I'm going to try to do it. I, I can hold it this way. Probably about that much deflection on the upside. Of course, down would be about the same amount. Because you can always add more to it if you need to. On the rudder, get this position. That's plenty of rudder right there. And, you know, about the same. And you can increase or, or decrease the rates as you feel necessary for your own, uh, your own flying capabilities and all. But that's it. We've got a great little aircraft here with the battery that I have in it. Let's see. Let me get my scale. Let's we'll see if we can weigh this and find out what our all-up weight is ready to fly. Because I actually put this... I actually put this a little uh, little extra paint on it. My goodness, even with the paint, I am at 7.35 ounces on this aircraft. So, <clears throat> that's going to conclude our build. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's going to conclude the build for us here. I hope you enjoy it. I know that uh, slow bipe air makes a fun flying airplane. This will last you a long time, and it's it's an easy build. Probably one of the easiest builds that I've done in a while. And um, by all means, if you build one of these, take some pictures of it and send it to crash.hancock at gmail.com or post it on our Facebook fan page. And I'd love to see what you came out with. And if you have any questions, again, be sure and ask me. Or you can also get in touch with, uh, with Michael over at slowbipe.com. And I was looking to see if I had an email address. It's on his website. But take it out and enjoy it. When you're ready to fly it, give it some throttle. Point it, you know, up at about a 45 degree angle. And then just kind of let it go. And be ready for fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this build. I hope you found it informative. And uh, just like I do on every CrashCast episode, we're going to tell you get out and build something, fly something, and enjoy this great RC hobby.